Hey, Hickok45 here. We're in the reloading room and you can see a 44 Magum in your lens there. We are going to do a revolver cleaning video. I get a lot of requests to do a revolver cleaning video and it, it's not the first thing that comes to my mind uh, to do, but uh, I thought why not? I've been out today shooting a couple of different revolvers actually. Uh, this 44 Magnum uh, Trail Boss 629. Uh, we were out planking with that here on the farm just a little bit ago and thought, well, let's just turn the camera on while we clean that baby. Earlier today, did a little hat shooting video, which is already up or you will see, with the old Colt 45 and uh, cleaned it. So it's been kind of a revolver cleaning day. And you can see we got him all bright and shiny, so I'm going to put him back together. But it just occurred to me I do get a lot of requests to do. A revolver cleaning video so thought I would do that well now what I do and again um, that's with anything I do even the way I shoot this is the way I do it and I'm sure it's different from what a lot of people do what I do is I come in and hose it down basically uh, I take well let's see I might use the, the liquid ballast all but I go ahead and just spray it down uh, the muzzle get in there in the forcing cone, shoot it into the, the barrel, all around the frame. Sometimes I'll use the liquid ballastol, other times the aerosol, just whatever you prefer. And I like to get it all over the front of the cylinder, yeah, in there, just everything. It's kind of like giving it a bath. Uh, maybe I overdo it sometimes. And I just let it soak for a minute, usually after I get it watered down. Yeah, pretty well like that because as I think I mentioned in my other cleaning video the ballastol is not some super uh, acid that just eats everything away in about two seconds it's a little slower acting maybe in some ways uh, that's uh, one of the characteristics of it but it uh, it's just it's really nice stuff because it does break it loose lead uh, powder residue you know whatever just depending on how much you have and how long it might take so that's kind of what I do. I soak it down like that, and then I may mean, wipe off the excess. And one reason I don't have some nifty little cute rubber pad here on my reloading table, I have a seriously reinforced uh, table uh, just out of thick two inch boards, and is because I, I don't want to baby it. You know, if I want to put some kind of cleaning solution on it, I do it. Ballastol is, is uh, one of the characteristics of it is it's really nice for wood. Uh, it's great on the stocks. I use it on all the stocks and leather, uh, my guns and holsters. So I can just spray it anywhere I want. This bench has probably been ballastol a million times just uh, because of that. So it has no effect on that other than to uh, actually uh, help preserve it and protect it. But So I just leave the wood plain and uh, get a little extra on there today. I normally use the aerosol I guess most of the time on a small project. And I've got a big muzzle loader that's filthy is why I usually bring out the, the big gun there. But uh, I get the excess off and one of the things I like to do too is uh, not be shy about getting it up there in that forcing cone and I keep a couple of toothbrushes I, uh, I like a toothbrush, uh, a dirty one over here that I can use for things like this. Just brush on the, the forcing cone. So it's that area. And that, that's a, it's a particularly, particular, uh, particularly difficult spot sometimes up in there. Uh, depending on how clean you want to get it. Uh, and uh, I keep a uh, Toothbrushes, I have a system, I may have said this in another video, I keep a couple of dirty ones over here on the right and over on the left I have a stash of four or five clean ones and I just uh, move them over because I have also uh, purposes, I think I showed you in a Glock cleaning video where I, I like to have uh, perfectly clean brushes to, to hit parts of the, of the gun. All right, now that's an area that kind of takes a brush or a brushing. Uh, also under the, uh, the extractor, the star there, that's an area where you can get powder residue in there. Now, if you've been shooting a great deal, I highly recommend you get in there and you maybe brush on that. You could do it anyway. I don't typically get in there with a the brush uh, unless I've been noticing, you know, problems. I will quite often get in there with a, uh, you know, paper towel, 
just to make sure there's nothing in there. Maybe a uh, Q-tip behind there, you know, the back of the star, the ejector star there and everything. And uh, that's, That is one area of a revolver where, uh, boy, you can shut it down, keep that thing from spinning. If uh, you get uh, some uh, crud, uh, even powder flecks of some types of uh, powder underneath that and your revolver is out of operation. There are things that can make a revolver uh, unreliable if it's if it's dirty or has a problem under there. Uh, okay, so you see I'm cleaning out in here under the barrel, in here in the crane where that locks up. You know, it always gets dirty in there. Just getting the worst of it out. The first go around, I do exactly what you see me doing. I'm just getting the worst of it. Uh, hands are or uh, soaked with ballastol, all this rag is soaked with ballastol. It's, it's a very non-toxic uh, uh, stuff, it doesn't hurt you at all. So I just get the worst of everything off to begin with. Uh, that way as I'm handling the gun. So it's kind of uh, like most of you do probably, you go from dirty rags and patches to gradually cleaner of course, uh, inside and out of the gun. So the gun essentially now is in a position where I could just stick it back in my holster if I really wanted to. Uh, and to look at it, it doesn't look you know, too dirty, but we know it's not clean. So then I've got my little cigar box up here with patches, and I might get out a Q-tip or two there. So then what I do is kind of the same thing I do with a Glock barrel. I soak a couple of patches, ballastol, and This takes a, I keep a couple of rods here, one for 9mm, 357, and one for 44, 45, 40 caliber. This one right here, I just push it through each chamber. And of course I have the, the rag is soaked, and so is the, uh, the chamber is, is soaked for my spraying on it. So there's lots of ballastol in there, lots of uh, cleaner lube in there. Now one, the one difference uh, here might be that I'll sometimes just let it soak a little bit longer. I might come in from shooting and uh, just spray down the gun and then I, may, I might go eat or go do something else. I might shoot something else or, or whatever if I'm going to be around uh, for a while. I don't necessarily jump right into it and I'll let the gun just soak a little bit depending on how dirty it is and what kind of firearm it was. Do the cylinders. Cylinders are usually the dirtiest and then run one up into the bore. Okay. Now I don't. I use a bore snake for rifles, but I typically do not use them uh, for revolvers. I, I'm sure some of you do. This is a bore snake. If you've seen one of those, you drop the end down through the barrel chambers, whatever, and then just pull the whole thing through. They work great. Uh, I really, really like them. I have have them for most calibers, but I, I just don't use them for revolvers or uh, semi-automatic pistols. Uh, typically, they generally are so simple to clean without that. But uh, some of you probably do. Okay, then I get my next clean patch, a little bit cleaner, and run it through. You notice this patch is not as dirty already. There's a there's a difference. That first one was, you know, pretty cruddy, and uh, no magic about this. You know how to clean a bore a barrel. You just uh, keep working on it until the patches are pretty much clean. And go through the barrel. It's always better, the one advantage of the bore snake, of course, is it's always better to go from the, uh, the breech end, from the forcing cone end of a barrel. That's uh, impossible virtually uh, with a uh, revolver like this unless you use a, a bore snake. But I'm pretty careful. You don't want to be scratching up the muzzle. Uh, least little scratch ding here at the muzzle can affect the accuracy uh, of, of the gun. Uh, as the bullet leaves the barrel, the gases around the bullet, uh, leave at a, a, a you know, different rate. If you've got a, for example, if you have a cut right here on the muzzle on one side of it, if I took a file and just a little extra cut there, you wouldn't think it would have an effect on it. But uh, as I understand, as the bullet's leaving, uh, those gases escaping the muzzle need to be escaping evenly because at, at that last instant, you know, you do have a more of a cut or a, some kind of ding here on one side. It can actually cause the bullet to go awry as it's leaving. So I know that's probably hard to imagine and probably would have to be pretty bad on a on the average handgun for you to notice it but uh, anyway you want to you want to avoid scratching the muzzle if at all possible that's why cleaning rods are made of soft materials generally all right so that gun is uh 
a lot cleaner than it was when we first started. But I'm going to do another patch. Another thing while I'm cleaning, let me uh, go ahead and say, where you live and how you shoot, your habits make a difference uh, too in terms of how clean you, you need to get the revolver or you need to get the gun. That might seem like a silly thing to say. Your grandpa taught you that you never leave one speck of dirt on that gun or one little speck of oil or whatever. Uh, actually, if I were going to shoot this gun tomorrow, I was pretty sure I was going to get it out, or maybe even next weekend, uh, I might stop pretty much right here where I am. Yeah, I've got him cleaned up pretty well. I've got him ballastalled. I could put him away right now, wipe him down and put him away. Uh, that... Uh, even though, if I run another patch through here, it's not going to be perfectly clean. I'm going to run a dry patch through, maybe before I normally would, just to show you. See, it's not, it's not perfectly clean. And I'm sure the cylinders are not perfectly clean. One advantage, uh, one thing I like about this, this lube and preservative is uh, I know that it's not going to rust. If I have, uh, just like with most lubes though, if you have it oiled, it's not going to rust. Uh, so nothing's going to happen to this gun. Uh, as long as it's clean, if there's some little minor residue, it's just not a critical issue, at least on a big old caliber revolver like this. If it were, after I shoot it six times, I need to be cleaning it, right, before I loaded it and shot it six more times. So uh, the, the key thing there is, is making sure everything's preserved, you're not getting rust or anything like that, damage. Okay, so, so I'm getting in pretty good shape now. And, and again, I do shoot so much. And this gun will be shot before all that much longer that I really don't uh, get out the magnifying glass and make certain that every little speck is clean. Uh, I get them pretty clean. I make sure they're, uh, they're coated with uh, oil, with the ballastol, and uh, I know they're safe. So they're not going to rust, and this gun is stainless, so it's not likely to rust, of course, anyway. But uh, that gun is pretty clean right now. It is, it is pretty clean. Uh, you, it's always advisable not to leave a lot of oil, though, in the chambers. Uh, you can cause uh, additional pressure in the chamber when you fire by having too much you know, oil in there. You want that fairly dry. I will typically, when I come out to shoot a gun, just run a patch through there. and may even run through the barrel. Uh, particularly if it's a high pressure round of some sort. I want to make sure that thing is really clean uh, and rifles especially. Big old 44 you can sort of look down the bore and kind of check it but there we go. So uh, then the other thing about ballastol is it seems to just as, uh, as the time goes on it seems to let loose uh, separating the copper and the lead if there's any residue in there at all still you know over time and it's, uh, it's good to run something down the barrel every now and then. Uh, I bring it out to shoot it to, to go ahead and run another patch through and I'll probably find something else coming loose that wouldn't come loose uh, you know, initially after shooting it. But, but that gun is in pretty good shape now, uh, ready to shoot. And it's clean enough for me. Again, somebody's grandpa might have a heart attack that I haven't run 49 patches through there until uh, you know, I could absolutely not get any dirt out of it, but uh, it, it's it's fine. Fine for me anyway. Like I say, this is the way I do it, the way I've been doing it for 30 or 40 years, and, uh, and it's in pretty good pretty good shape. We might do a little close up here and uh, get a get a better look at it, get things out of the way here. Maybe get a look at that that cylinder. Uh, Yeah, so you see a lot of shiny stainless steel there now, and I guess I fired about 50 rounds uh, through the gun, but she looks uh, pretty much like new there. Pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. Do the forcing cone. Of course, they never look like new hardly uh, after you've had quite a few rounds through the gun, but. Uh, not bad, not bad at all. It's the Trail Boss. It's a 629-44, three-inch barrel. And uh, you can see up in there where the, the crane comes together. It's uh, that's pretty clean. I see a little bit of little crud there, maybe in that. But in front of the cylinder, pretty good shape. Now some people take uh, maybe some flits or something 
and and shine down the front of their cylinder, particularly on a uh, stainless gun. Every now and then, I I have done that before. I, I I don't do very often. I shoot these things so often, I don't worry about the front of the cylinder. If you're a shooter and you have revolvers, you know what I mean. The, the front of the, the cylinder just it just isn't going to look like the rest of the gun unless you do take uh, some abrasive you know polishing compound like flits and, and work on it every now and then. Uh, but I I don't do that very often. So that gun is in pretty good shape and is ready to shoot uh, again, it's ready to put away more importantly um, and like I say I do check them before I fire them again and that's one of the most important things that you can do. And the other thing is keep them in a gun rug or, or I keep them wrapped in a ballast all rag or in one of these uh, socks that you can buy. Mainly keep them from getting nicked up in the safe because I, I, I wipe them down before I put them away. And if you're new to firearms, and I think a lot of people are that uh, have been asking me to do a revolver cleaning video, uh, that is something you always want to do. Even with stainless, I do that. If I, handling this gun like I'm doing right now even, after and it has kind of a film of oil, doesn't matter. I take a, I keep some cotton rags in my gun safe area, and before I lay it aside or put it in the sock to put away, I, I grab one of those, and I just wipe it down as if it's a blue gun. I just wipe every part of the cylinder very quickly and key areas and then I put it in a sock. That's the last thing I ever do whenever I pick one up. That way you'll never get rust, you'll never get fingerprints rusting on your gun uh, on the surface. I never have had that and uh, that's the reason. Okay, just always wipe them down, grab it right back to the wood or the grips, you know, and then the last thing you do, you got your fingers on the grip, just put that thing in wherever you're going to put it, pistol rug or whatever, and uh, then whenever you touch it, just do that again. Keep a rag with whatever lubricant you use, whatever oil, just lightly uh, coated. And I don't have one out here in the reloading room with me. I'm just using a paper towel, but I definitely have those handy with every gun uh, you know, in the house. And uh, just keep one of those handy and just always wipe it down. Don't ever be afraid to show somebody and look at it, check it's unloaded. And uh, I'm never... Uh, shy about handling a firearm just because it's clean because I don't want to get fingerprints on it. I keep a ballast all soaked rag lightly soaked nearby and just wipe it down before I put it away and it's just never a problem. So so that's the old 629 clean ready to store. That's a Glock barrel same thing. If you look at that barrel we might get another zoom time here uh, and uh, kind of take a look. This these Glocks, no matter how much you shoot them, if you use that, that, that procedure, you know, soak them and run the clean rags through them, you can see that rifling in there, how, uh, how clean it is, nothing on it. Of course, I don't shoot lead bullets in, uh, in my Glocks, but you can really see the, the rifling, the shine, you know, in there. See the little specks on it even, okay? So same procedure, and, and again, because Glock barrels are sim simple to, to get to, just like revolver barrels and cylinders, I don't uh, use the boar snake generally. All right. So one clean gun, and uh, she's ready to, to store away. I uh, don't, I uh, can't think of anything else that you need to be wary of with one of these revolver. With a revolver, you want know, to make sure that your ejector rod is tight, of course, and that uh, you're clean behind the, the ejector star there. That's an area of, uh, of, of problem right there. It's a potential problem area back there. Just to remember that. If you're ever closing your cylinder and it won't close all the way, it's uh, probably because you've got something back there. Either that or this is loose. So check that and uh, make sure you're clean behind the ejector star. Uh, always possibility there. All right. So that's just revolver cleaning 101. You've been asking for it, and uh, that's how I do it. Y'all take care.